Uh, what else has been going on with Guild Wars? Loads of stuff's been coming out with Guild Wars 2. In fact, just before filming this, um, I, I was linked to a, uh, a video of some guys on the Great Northern Wall in uh, in Ascalon, and there's like uh, like a jumping puzzle, like actual proper platforming, and you have to find your way up the wall. That is so cool. That's one of those things that I always thought like would be awesome with Guild Wars 2, like way back in the early days where it was like barely anything was announced about the game. Back then we heard that you could climb trees, right? Th these were the kind of features that they had, and they were talking about all skills. We're going to have like multiple effects uh, about, you know, whether you're jumping and shit like that. Just very, very weird. We didn't know much about the game. But one of those like interesting little things that I always used to sort of think about going back to the game was like climbing around on a on a great northern wall because now there were like, that's one thing they always said that you'd be able to jump and stuff and uh yeah i always kind of imagined that would be like an awesome little bit with the adventure and then i kind of became a bit cynical and i was like uh, it probably won't be in the game you've got to be re realistic there's probably going to be loads of other stuff that they'll end up doing and then there was this video and it was the weirdest thing for me watching that video because it's like damn, there are these things around, and I never thought they'd be, but I don't know what it is, I, it didn't excite me that much, like, I, I was like, oh yeah, that does look really cool, but I guess I still just don't believe that there's going to be that much jumping puzzle stuff going on, we saw, the video said that every single jumping puzzle results in you getting a skill point, now, I'm not sure if that is true, but if it is, then that means you can pretty much look at all the skill points on the map. We know that a lot of the skill points are just, oh, kill people, and you'll get a, 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 the skill point out of it. They're not all jumping puzzles. So you can look at all the skill points and say, all right, let's say just a third of those are jumping puzzles, and you can get a pretty good idea of how few there will be in the game. Oh, I'm blind again. I need to start using skill five. Why does it let me lose three conditions? When am I going to have three on me? Miku, you picked the wrong target. If you went for the Zavant... Then I wouldn't be constantly blind. Fucking blinding flash, man. All my rage. Oh, piss off. She is she using blinding search and blinding flash? That's so annoying. Just die, please. There you go. I don't like how she was training on me and not the NPC either. That's kind of annoying. See, that's the kind of thing. I've been playing through um, a lot of wins. Can we go that way? Uh, I've been playing through a lot of wins of change. I'm just curious that there might be some dialogue down here, so... Just want to check. I've been playing through a lot of Winds of Change lately. A lot of Winds of Change because we've got to get ready for Tom Bluewood. So um, I've kind of been going through it We're on him in normal mode. And also, I've been doing so much like preparation for him. Like, I had to complete all of Nightfall to get a hero and stuff like that. But anyway, um, in it, I've been playing it and like recognizing a lot of things about Guild Wars 1 now that I'm really happy have gone in Guild Wars 2. Like, for instance, Blind in this game is just 100% miss. It's just frustrating to play with a game like that, but for Guild Wars 2, they've rebalanced blind, and it only affects your next hit, but obviously, uh, skills associated with blind recharge a lot quicker. So, it may it adds a lot more dynamics to the combat, because you decide which skill you want to waste, it's, 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 there's just a lot more intricacies to it, and it's less frustrating on the whole. There's so many little things I've been noticing while playing through Winds of Change like that, that just make me think, yeah... Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to all these little changes they've made to the conditions and boons. There was, in fact, a whole article that came out uh, very recently um, about changes in the beta. I'm thinking of doing like uh, a, a video focused on that completely because I got permission to use Guild Wars 2 footage from uh, Guild Wars 2 Guru which is just awesome of them but so far all I've used it for was that little update video which seems a bit naff and a bit shit so I kind of want to do some more of those things but, uh, but yeah. Before we leave, um, these buildings here, we d we've finished the dungeons as you know if you've been watching those we've been doing Silvari stuff in the dungeons. Yeah these are like the druid houses guys and these are pretty much exactly what you see the Silvari start to grow themselves and live in you can't really see the houses too clearly that doesn't look like anything the silver you live in in guild wars 2 but stuff like this in particular in fact i might show oh well i can't show you but at the actual outpost for aurora glade if you go there you'll find loads of those little ruined old houses yeah i think what that is is one of those is like a druid house and the other one and these other ones are like centaur lodgings i think in a the Etin's back, at, no not in back, sorry, in Dry Top, you can find a load of centaurs there and they seem to be like clustered around like what looks like a proper town. Or these could be just Shining Blade houses or something like that. Or hell, you might even go further than that and say they're a Guild Wars 2 race that we haven't really interacted with in Guild Wars 1. Like for instance, there's a, a bit of concept art for Guild Wars 2 that depicts, you know like those little holes in like the, uh, like the orange rock there? Uh, there's some concept art for Guild Wars 2, I think it's called something like Dredge Housing or something, but the concept art essentially looks exactly the same as those little holes on the wall, so maybe it's Dredge stuff, you know, we, we know that they live underground, so 
Maybe they are around there. They just don't come out in the jungle. Who knows? Like, the dredge are weird. Like, I don't know how much of the underground that dredge actually live in. Because we heard about a tunnel that goes from the uh, from Soros Furnace down to Camphor. Like, that's a hell of a tunnel. So, you have to assume that the dredge have been to a fair few places. Finally, we get some dialogue. Jesus Christ. Uh, Thackeray says, it doesn't add up. There are this many white mantle when they're so far from Lion's Arch. I would think that they'd be rallying to oppose Princess Salma. What's their angle in all of this? Miki doesn't reply. Maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she does. I don't know. This is actually something I was going to mention as well, actually. There are a hell of a lot of white mantle around it. I, I suppose if that is the first bit of dialogue here, then they could feasibly have had more if they had had more missions planned in the off. I don't know. Maybe I just like to think about content that was but never ended up. Like Utopia, stuff like that. I do hope that they've got some actual law written for Utopia that maybe later a later date we'll be able to sort of learn more about. Because there's this question. They always talk about how Utopia just kind of evolved into Eye of the North. So I've talked a lot about Utopia in that campaign and how cool I think a lot of that stuff is and how I'd like to go there. But we don't really know for sure. Oh, shutting down the spirit. That's where it's at, my friends. But we don't really know for sure whether the law was adapted into Utopia or whether it was simply... Um, uh, the, the like the art, art assets in certain locales and stuff like that. I mean, I suppose now that they've established the uh, Asura have, as having quite Aztec architecture, will the law really state that there's another area of the world that's got very Aztec feel to it? When you know, because that's a little bit redundant, you know. So I, I guess it does impact in some way, but. Oh, Jesus, why are there so many here? It's weird, because even though we're so far away from Lion's Arch, it doesn't feel like these guys are that out of place. Because last time we were here, it was all White Mantle that were here as well. And this is the area, by the way, for those of you who might not have played uh, Prophecies, this is the area where you're running the Crystal Shards. Essentially, you see that thing... Oh, is that the portal there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the portal. That thing in the middle there with all the vines? That is a portal um, to another area of the jungle, a sealed off area of the jungle down here, where you can find a giant boss, a giant guardian of a sacred area that the druids once, once inhabited, known as the Henge of Denravi, which uh, the Shining Blade in the plot of Prophecies, the Shining Blade opened up the way. And to open up the way to get there, to get to that, that serpent and fight their way in, they had to work like the magics of the... Um, they're rezzing each other, for fuck's sake. Really? You're going to do that in the solo mission? Well, hopefully it's only res sig, so that shouldn't be a problem. So basically, to do it, what what the Shining Blade had to do, what I had to do, is uh, grab these crystals, and you need to have crystals at all three of these shrines. This was one of the shrines, that was a shrine, that was a shrine, I, be I believe that was the way it worked, and you could get the crystals in the middle. But once, they were, once your team owned all of them, instead of the white mantle, the portal would open for you and you alone. And then you would go in there. Uh, and then, of course, the Shining Blade all went to the Henge of Denravi. Uh, and they thought they were safe there. They thought they were fine. But were very quickly betrayed. And they didn't know how, but there was a rat in the Shining Blade. And it turned out to be one of the leaders of the Shining Blade. Back then, there were three leaders of the Shining Blade. There were Evinia, Marcus, and Saedra. And uh, Marcus, the man, typically, um, decided he was going to betray everyone and he gave them up to the White Mantle. The White Mantle found the location of the Henge. And in the lore, this is never reflected in the game. And people argue that this is why players don't really go to the Henge of Denravi. The truth is, because there's no quest there, but whatever. Uh, the people will say that um, in the lore, what happened is uh, the whole place was annihilated. Everyone was completely destroyed. If you watch Warren Cryer, a few of the characters actually mentioned that, which I think was really cool. Because that was a really important part of the story. That was really significant. However, we, uh, the players, never got to see it happen. There you go, Miku. You have some healing. I never know how close to her I need to be. Oh, it's within earshot. Okay, that's fine. Right, I don't need to move very close then. So yeah, like in the law, there was just devastation. Everyone was massacred, but you don't get to see it, and you don't get to see the repercussions of it either. Please, can we target the ritualist? He keeps removing your hex, Miku. So I don't know what you want me to say. Just sort it out, yeah. There you go. Have some more heals. I can't help but move slightly closer. It's a bit weird. Please, just kill the rit. The rit is overpowered. It, it, this is definitely harder. I don't remember what the last mission here is either, actually. What is the last mini mission? Uh, logic would suggest it's somewhere around here. Is it a Bloodstone Fen? Do you go to the... Oh, this is really bad. You might not be able to tell. You probably can tell. But uh, this is... Hearts of the North is something I've only ever played through once. I played through the War and Cry era a fair few times, but Hearts of the North I only played through once. So this is literally my second time coming through it. Uh, Winds of Change I've played through loads now. 
Um, but yeah, so I guess this is kind of the content I've played least in Guild Wars, unless we're talking about PvP and stuff. Sorry, they're speaking. Uh, Miku says, ha! That's what you get for crossing me. It isn't healthy to be driven by, driven by anger like that, says Thackeray. Whatever the white man to have done, is it worth letting them have such influence over you? Miku replies, well, maybe I'm only upset with myself for running away when I should not have. What do you mean? Oh, that's another story, she says. For another time, perhaps. Uh, and then she says she's using Promise of Death on this guy. And I didn't notice because, obviously, I was reading the previous dialogue. So, yeah, Miku has got an interesting backstory. Very much has got an interesting backstory. I already mentioned it. I ki I'm kicking myself for mentioning it because I don't think I should have. But uh, we learn more about Miku in Winds of Change. What, what Hearts of the North, I kind of see it as, is like a middle ground between... Yeah, look, they're using Signal of Return. Don't do that. For Christ's sake... Gonna have to wait until Miku comes up back up. Yeah, I kind of see Hearts of the North rather than being its own chapter, though I will say, you know, if they're calling it its own chapter, fine, let them call it that. Um, I kind of see it as more of a middle ground be between um, uh, uh, the War in Kryta and a reason to then go to Cantha with the Winds of Change. Oh, awesome, we actually just get to fight this one guy. Wait, does Ride the Lightning now blind? How interesting, I didn't realise it did that. You alright all the way over there, Miku? Just killing this bitch here. There we go. I actually love getting poison kills and stuff on this game because... I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. I just minimised my screen. Oh, crap. That's going to turn off fraps. Oh, no, no, no. And please don't kill me while... Oh, shit. Okay, there we go. Fraps is back on. Sorry, guys. My my new keyboard is annoying. You know, I talked about my new little keyboard set up. Like, when my hand's, like, on top of the desk while my mouse hand's, like... You know, like, desks get an, uh, a tray underneath where you then, like, have your mouse and stuff that you usually pull out? I've got one hand lower and then one hand higher. It's a little bit weird. I'm used to it, but it's a little bit weird. And I keep pressing the wrong button, so I just hit the Windows key there accidentally. That's going to be hell to sync back up. Oh, well... Come on, kill the mantles, zealots. They really are taking a lot longer. Am I just playing badly this time? Please, don't hesitate to do that. To uh, Let me know how bad I am as Kieran. We actually, there is something that's something quite significant I think we've missed. You see how we've got these two slots here empty? Uh, this mission, one of those gets filled up. But only once you've seen certain dialogue that Kieran has to say. So, uh, what's our actual objective? Where does it say? It just says search for the white mantle. Well, we found the white mantle, Jesus. Did the spirits just kill Miku? Really? Christ's sake. I guess this is as good a time as any to learn about these other things. Rain of Arrows hits three targets near you. So that's like a mini bar barrage. At least three conditions. And this does 20 damage. And poisons if it hits. Okay. This inflicts deep wound if they're bleeding. So we wait for Miku to target someone for that. See, that's such a good skill. Interrupts, deep wound, moves twice as fast, five energy and only two second recharge. If we press K, look at how high all of Kieran's attributes are. 20, 20, 20. I shit you not, the only thing he hasn't got is... It's actually really weird seeing all those attributes there. That's really kind of mind-boggling. That's crazy, though. Uh, like, the only thing he doesn't have is a pet. I think that was a bit of a missed trick there with, uh, you know, such a significant ranger in the story not having a pet. But then they do that quite a lot as well. Like, I would say, oh, well, that happens all the time, but it doesn't. Like, think of Aiden and stuff. They don't have pets. There's a few cool factions, guys, that have got pets. Um, like, one of them's got a, uh, a pet named Hector. He's a crab. There is another one as well, but I'm forgetting his name. Oh, Zoe, obviously, with the uh, with the Black Mower. So, yeah, there's some cool stuff going on there. I think it might, that particularly with Aiden and stuff, I think that might just come down to the fact that at launch they didn't kind of realise they could have NPCs with pets or something, or they hadn't quite refined how to do it, and then later that was kind of added more. Hang in there, Miku. Look at them with their Drake pets. Yeah, come Guild Wars 2, we'll have our own Drake pets. Just you wait. Just you wait. These fights are taking so long. I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to have to speed it up. I can't keep rambling like this. We've been going for half an hour already. Fucking hell. Jesus. How many things are we supposed to be killing? I might even go to Wiki to check. See, there is a section at the back of over here where you can do a bonus. When I played Prophecies, I didn't do the bonuses. Uh, but the bonus here was you could kill like uh, a superior for the White Mantle, some some like powerful White Mantle guy. Oh, here we go. So Thackeray says, it looks like they're, they've holed up in this camp, camp. Yeah, yeah, it's over there. So what you would do is while all these crystals are being run and you were trying to stop the uh, white mantle. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, this is it. And Miku says, I'm certain we'll find what we're looking for here. Are you up to it? And we say, it won't be easy, but together we can do this. I'll keep you covered, but I need you in there sowing chaos. Find their weakness. He shouts, find their weakness. 
We get a Paragon skill. Find their weakness. Uh, this is actually quite good because you've got such high expertise. You can see those 20 attributes that I was talking about. Because it's so high, you can just keep spamming the damn thing and you will do a lot of damage. You can. I think the idea is you use Find Their Weakness on Miku. So this raises the question, guys. Uh, what about the last slot? Do we get the last slot filled? Well, find out next time on Let's Play. No. So, well, we will find out next time. But, uh, yeah. What was I talking about? Something, uh... To do with I don't know I can't remember I see I, I'm quite bad I did that I played a uh, dear Esther earlier and uh, I kept forgetting about the stuff I was saying as well and I always feel a little boom we just knocked him out find their weakness love it uh, yeah I feel quite bad because that's like a new let's play so there might be people watching who'd like don't watch much of my stuff and they'll be like oh this fucking retard keeps forgetting stuff he's saying yes well <laughs> I do I'm, I'm quite bad for that Shit, what was I saying? I'm, I'm not going to commentate for a second so that when I do the editing and I, re and I watch it through, I'll know what I just said and then I can tell you guys it, whatever the hell it was. So I'll see you in a sec. Yeah, it wasn't much that I was going to say. We were talking about how that slot had been filled with Find Their Weakness. The really retarded thing here is I'm playing through, not commentating, using Find Their Weakness, and that's the thing I was going to talk about. But yes, there is one more slot. All I was going to do is pose the question, will the other slot be filled? And also, uh, you guys should think, you know, all of our skill bars, they're all skills that don't actually exist in the game. However, we've just been given a real skill, a real Paragon skill, and that's kind of significant later. So, uh, So yeah, bear that in mind. Brilliant. So Miku says, nicely done. It looks like you can rise to the occasion after all. Is that it? Oh, that must be it. Wait, what's this over here? Somebody to speak to? Oh, the missive. Okay. Uh, so Th Thackeray says, thanks, I think. Oh, never mind. Let's uh, let's search the camp. So over here, you can find a missive. I think this is where the portal actually was that takes you down sort of south to... See, I don't know. What is the idea here? That they're just really high cliffs all around and because this is a universe where nobody's mastered air travel yet. It's not. See, I'm so interested in what the Hinge of Den Ravi's like in Guild Wars 2. So interested. It's going to be really weird to go back there. So, uh... It says, He has spoken. You must lead your forces into the depths of the Maguma jungle. Shed your mantle and disappear, but do not fall silent. The word of the unseen must be spoken. While your men disperse, we will lead an assault on Beetleton in the guise of the Shining Blade. We will cast doubt over the usurpers, shake their foundation, and become the poison that seals the fate of the traitor. Salma. Yeah, that's why the last mission's at Beetleton, not in the jungle. That's why I got a little bit confused there. It's a really weird, like, mark on the floor here. Uh, so, the guys start talking. Thackeray says, this is worse than I thought. If only there was some way to be everywhere and to end all of this. Because, of course, in the law, these guys don't have map travel and we're ages away. Mika says, you know that isn't possible, Kieran. I think you want to take care of everything, and that leaves you with the power to do nothing. That's what Gwen was talking about. You need to make a decision. I think that you can be a strong man and a capable one. If you show your strength, you won't need to rely on others. They'll rely on you. Thackeray says, if the White Mantle within the Maguma jungle flee, I, then I have to trust that my allies will defend Lion's Arch. So we go to Beetleton. Those people need us, and we will not fail them. That's the fire I was hoping for. Well said. Now, let's get going. I like how he, he kind of treats us as incompetent. Of course we're going to defend Lion's Arch. Right now, we are kicking butt and taking names over there. We are absolutely owning everything. Put your trust into Peter Redhill. He saved the world three times over. Well, no, Peter hasn't really on his own, has he? Peter, Tom, and Matt together have saved the world three times. Four times, actually, if you think of Eye of the North. So Gwen says, Something about him's changed. This isn't the always doting, sometimes insufferable Kieran. He was always trying too hard. And now he's... I don't know where. But he's not here. Have I lost another person I'm close to? How much more can I stand to lose? How can people stand to let someone get so close to them when it's so simple for life to come and take it all away? You might... Right, see, this is where it starts to grate on me a little bit. She says, is this the kind of person I want to be, shutting myself off and being afraid to expose my feelings? Maybe happiness is better than feeling nothing at all. Maybe it's worth the pain. See, it all sounds way too familiar to what we heard, guys, way back when, during those extra quests you could do in Eye of the North where it kind of concluded her story. Back then she came to the conclusion that she shouldn't just dwell on the past. Back then she became the better person and it was... Uh... It was just a bit badly done here, that's all. Gwen says, if he can change, then maybe, maybe I can change too. So, true love, they both have to change in radical ways for them to actually work in a relationship. That's true love if I ever heard it. Compromise. Okay, guys, I feel like I should start ending all of these videos with, like, some really bad relationship advice. But there we go, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you've been liking our Hearts of the North. We're getting further into it now, so, uh, so, yeah. Hope to see you next time. See you later, everybody.